Okay. So this is the course homepage, uh, E627A speech signal processing. Uh, these are roughly the topics which I'm going to uh, discuss with you. Uh, it's like conventional ASR systems. What are conventional speech recognition systems uh, which use machine learning? Uh, we have Gaussian mixture models. They learn from the data and then do speech recognition. Then hidden Markov models, finite state transducers, decision trees. And uh, so all these tools are conventional tools which have been used for uh, decades now, but still they are very popular and uh, many, many um, commercial speech recognition systems, they are built on these technologies. Then we will be discussing about Caldi toolkit, which is a toolkit or uh, it's a set of functions, programs to implement speech recognition systems. And it is very popular and very successful. Uh, most of the speech recognition uh, systems today, they are based on Caldi toolkit. Earlier, they, there used to be HTK toolkit from Cambridge University, but that toolkit uh, is no longer that much popular as we have Caldi now. And Caldi is being developed by John Hopkins University in um, US. Uh, so then uh, we'll be discussing uh, these conventional models, the HMM model, how they how they combine with the deep learning, uh, deep neural networks, and we get a hybrid ASR system, which is more robust to uh, different uh, uh, uncertainties in the speech, as well as in the environment. Um, so this actually DMM, HMM, uh, DMM, DNN HMM system, hybrid system is most popular, basically, um, this is mostly used in uh, current technologies of speech recognition. Then we will be going towards the cutting edge ASR systems, which are built using end-to-end -end ASR technology, end-to-end -end deep technologies. They do not use HMMs. So they are built on connectionist temporal classification approach. And in this way, we'll be, uh, these are the topics which we'll be focusing on in our second half, uh, which starts now. Some references which might be useful. Uh, one is the Automatic Speech Recognition, a Deep Learning Approach. This is a book. Uh, I think it is available online. I will just uh, check, maybe the TAs can check or I can find it out. If it is there, I can share with you. Uh, and then the HTK book, this is the standard, this is a, the standard at, uh, uh, manual on speech recognition, uh, basically for GMM, HMM based ASR. So our, uh, as I told you that before Caldi, HTK was the popular toolkit. So HTK book is the uh, manual or the documentation of HTK uh, toolkit. Um, and, uh, but still they, it contains nice overview of different technologies which were used there. Then the Caldi SR documentation is there as a reference, which is quite state of the art. And then other books for machine learning like PRML from Bishop and Deep Learning by Goodfellow. These are uh, some books on machine learning, not specifically for ASR, but machine learning. Okay. Okay, so that is the overview of what we are going to do now in the post mid sem part of this course. Do you have any questions? Uh, if you have any questions, you can write in the chat window. Okay, so Sumit is saying that maybe he's referring to this book, uh, uh, this uh, Dong Yu and Li Deng book. This uh, Li Deng is principal scientist, I think maybe the he's leading the machine learning or speech recognition research groups in Microsoft. Uh, CM Bishop is also in Microsoft. <laughs> okay, a lot of work coming from Microsoft. Actually, Caldi also was developed uh, in the beginning uh, 
in collaboration with Microsoft, but now I think it is open source and it's all, uh, I think it's independent of Microsoft now. Okay, anybody has any questions? Uh, otherwise I will start the presentation. So, okay, I think. I can share my screen. Again. Okay, so this is what we are going to discuss modern speech technologies. So, I will start with a very old i will start with very old methods of studying speech so before we had recordings and computational resources people still studied speech uh, people did uh, many many interesting things with speech uh, starting not starting you can't we can't say when did it start but at least we know some history we know uh, paninian grammar which is very popular so that is roughly the field of phonology uh, and it is even done today we have phonology groups in major universities of the world um, so where people study how speech uh, behaves uh, so phonology systematically derives rules gen, uh, sorry the rules underlying languages providing ways to generalize for example when you do pluralization when i say plants and socks the last sound is sir sound but when i say bag it becomes bags hand become hands it is not sir but it's the so why is there a difference when i say plants we get sir when i say socks like when i pluralize sock it becomes socks which has sir but on the other hand when i say bag it becomes the bags and hand pluralizes to bags or hands, uh, the sound, not the sound. Nobody will say hands or bags, bags, hands. So what is the reason? Uh, we can't say what is the reason, but at least okay, can we find some general rules which is governing which sound will come? Will it be a sir or a the? Uh, actually, if you know Hindi alphabets, then phonology becomes very easy because these alphabets are organized in a phonological way. Uh, so let me give a, an explanation from the phonological perspective. When we say plant, uh, t is a an unvoiced sound. If you know uh, t, t, d, d, na, right in uh, Hindi alphabet, t, t, d, d. T, t, d, 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 d. So t and t, t, t and t are first the when you have any uh, like this is t varga. The first two alphabets are unvoiced. Next two alphabets are voiced. So t with a voicing with a, with a voicing becomes d. T becomes d. T, t, d, d. So this t. So whenever these unvoiced these first two alphabets the unvoiced one once they get s or sir when you pluralize them and the voiced ones they get a z when you pluralize them so t is in the t varga the t t so t gets us uh, an unvoiced s because t is unvoiced s is also unvoiced but if you go to d t t d the d is a third alphabet it is voiced one because first two are unvoiced next two are voiced D is a voiced alphabet, so D gets a Z. So D is voiced, so Z is the voiced form of S. So when you add voicing, voicing means basically uh, 
when you produce sound from your lungs that is called voicing it has got periodic structure like but this is there is no voicing if you look at the waveform it is all noise but if you look at the it has got a, a periodic structure so is it clear is this point clear if you have any questions please ask doubts so this is important what what we discussed i can ask you some question okay uh, if i say um uh, cock will I, will you get sir or the cock somebody can answer on the chat window when you say cock do you get a sir when you pluralize it or a zer when you pluralize it am i audible hello okay nobody is responding okay jayant jayant is uh, good jayant thank you jayant for uh, responding <laughs> yes because cock the k at the end uh, it is a a k k g g so k is a an unvoiced sound k the k sound is unvoiced but the voiced version is g so that is why we get uh, an s and not a z cox not a cox but if we have cog cog then we then we get cogs 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 okay so this was phonology which was very popular in the uh, it is still very popular uh, how different words they change uh, and how sounds uh, change uh, because of these Uh, inflections so phonological features are based on perceptual and articulatory properties of speech qua language and the aim of this analysis is very important which is not there in deep learning the aim of phonological study is brevity and explanation so just look at this uh, how these alphabets are arranged ka kha ga gha how they are arranged that you just by looking at them you can tell how they will modify right you know the first two columns will get a s last two columns will, will get a z just by looking at them you can generalize there is a periodicity there is a like periodic table or there is a structure in the uh, explanation that is very uh, intelligent or very very important in phonology but it is all done by humans it is not done by machines okay then uh, the onslaught of Uh, latest technologies sorry so we have uh, audio technologies audio recording technologies addison invented gramophone uh, which could record sounds and it could play back those same sounds and this is how a typically a waveform looks like there is a tool called prat p r w a t which you can use to do lots uh, many kinds of audio analysis i think you all must uh, install prat in your system i will just type it i have posted on the chat oh sorry uh, it went to private chat everyone so i have written the name prat it's a software very lightweight software you can install it in your machine it could be windows linux anything it will work uh, and you can use it to analyze audio very interesting at least for uh, uh, initial understanding of signals uh, audio signals it is very useful tool so this is uh, uh this was speech uh, recording technologies and then there were beginning of computational uh, resources using computational resources in uh, speech theory so we uh, developed techniques like spectrum uh, like fourier analysis as soon as you look at the uh, you hear a sound you record a sound you take the periodic portion or the the consistent portion of the sound a small window in the sound and what you find there is uh, if you do a, a periodic analysis the fourier analysis then the magnitude spectrum will look like 
this so it has because it's a periodic structure you get peaks in your spectrum and these are periodic peaks means they are harmonic so if this first peak is at some frequency f not equal to 100 hertz the next peak will be 200 hertz then 300 400 500 all the integral multiples this is the property of fourier uh, analysis fourier uh, transform then uh, what you find is when i produce a sound let's say it's uh, this sound is like a sinusoidal not exactly a sinusoidal but a periodic signal uh, a kind of distorted sinusoid you can say and it it will look something like this it will have some uh, first of all the periodic structure is there and then this envelope could be a static uh, some structure like either decreasing or increasing and decreasing some constant kind of envelope will be there when i say a uh, it will be one kind of envelope because the frequency is same it is still the same f not uh, but the envelope might be different so when you multiply the two it becomes like this but now when i say uh, at a higher frequency let's say 200 hertz frequency what i find is my peaks are shifted now i get a peak at 200 400 600 800 1000 in this way but the envelope is almost same because i am speaking the same vowel a uh, uh, so if i change the vowel if i say e let's say i say a uh, and i say e both have same frequency so this part remains the same but this part the envelope changes when i say e the envelope will be something different so this envelope has got a peak here and in that envelope the peaks will move to some other locations uh, so whenever i say e the this part is fixed so now but if i say e at a higher frequency i'm, so, I'm sorry my throat is not good today so i have cold cough and cold so i'm not able to make proper sounds but i hope you get the point so when i say uh, e at a higher frequency so what i find is my peaks are shifted but the envelope remains same right so what does it mean it means uh, if i am interested in knowing which vowel i am speaking then i can simply i need to just look at the envelope the individual peaks do not matter right because i may have a, a sharp voice or a, a baritone a low low frequency voice i may speak like uh, i am speaking like this or i may speak i am speaking like this like at a higher frequency so both have got different uh, values of f naughts but the structure is same the because the vowel is same uh, are you getting my point is if there are any questions at this moment please ask i think this is very important uh, i you uh, have i am i repeating something is this something you already know is this something you already know or is this something new can anybody reply please Am I audible? Uh, is this question clear? Okay. So fine. Uh, so I will continue with. Uh, okay. So let's go to the next slide. So okay. So this uh, kind of analysis is called source filter model. You all know in your uh, Fourier domain, whenever uh, you convolve in the time domain there is multiplication in the fourier domain so i have my lungs are producing this periodic chain uh, and this vocal cavity is modifying it so as to uh, make different sounds like same input train is coming and but the vocal cavity is different so different sounds uh, different vowels i hear for example i say uh, o e so only this part is changing the, the 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 pulse train which is coming from the lungs that is still the same uh, or the this uh, uh, my vocal cords those are still the same my vocal cords are vibrating the same way uh, o e only the vocal cavity is changing so it's like 
the this strain is getting convolved with this filter to produce different sounds and in the fourier domain it is like multiplication so the the pulse strain has this kind of a fourier transform the periodic signal and then this vocal cavity is inducing a structure so that the whole thing becomes like this this is called the source filter model now uh, this is an example so you see the peaks are at the same location in all these three but these are three different vowels this is a uh, as in oh this is a uh, as in father a uh, and this is e as in heat you can see the first peak is here in the spectral envelope second peak is here in the in the envelope third peak is here in the envelope and here there is a long gap this is e sound but in a sound we had these two peaks and then this third peak the the three peaks the location were different and when i say u the locations have again changed we have first two peaks here and third peak here so this is uh this is important um uh, uh, so so here you can see how we can use the spectrum to distinguish different vowels and this is the foundation of speech recognition that uh, different uh, spectral envelopes are observed in the uh, different in different vowels and they are consistent or different sounds so and you have studied in the first part about linear predictive coding and all other kind of analysis basically which are just trying to extract the spectral envelope that is it they are just trying to extract the spectral envelope uh, and uh, there is an interesting work from ken stevens ken stevens was a professor in mit he uh, spent considerable amount of uh, his career analyzing these sounds he has written this big this big a book the name of the book is acoustic phonetics this book and uh, the entire book is filled with these spectral analysis that how in different phonemes phonemes are like uh, alphabets in uh, hindi or sanskrit ka kh ga ga so the k sound the, the unit smallest unit that is the it is called a phoneme and uh, so this these phonemes uh, how different phonemes have different spectra what are consistent among them what is not consistent and can we uh, group them in certain ways so all that analysis has been done by ken stevens and what he concluded is it is very complicated and actually in running speech these uh, analyses uh, are very difficult because the like when i say father if i if i stop at a uh, then i will get this consistent pattern over this consistent window but in running speech it is merged with so many other things and this pattern is not consistent at all so this this kind of analysis becomes very difficult and uh, because of so much variability is there in the running speech and from person to person it varies so much that is why this kind of uh, analysis was not successful we we could not make any uh, actual speech recognition system using such an analysis okay so then uh, people moved on to uh, okay these are some different topics which are uh, interesting where which people do from these perspectives that uh, how do we study speech so they so much was developed all this uh, areas were developed uh, just with these kind of analysis but then there came machine learning approaches which enhanced the power to computationally analyze sounds i will just run this example it is not running how do i run it okay eloise dinner in 5 alexa tell me about the amazon echo amazon echo is a device designed around your voice that can provide information music news weather and more okay cool alexa how many teaspoons in a tablespoon one tablespoon equals 3 teaspoons alexa put on my saturday playlist playing your saturday playlist 
Alexa, volume up. Alexa, who is this? This is Weekend by the King. Not bad. Ah, oh, good timing. Here you go. Enjoying that? Mm. I will be pleased. Alexa, add stir fry vegetables to my shopping list. I've put stir fry vegetables on your shopping list. Alexa, what's on my calendar tomorrow? At 12 pm, there's Sam's birthday picnic in the park. Alexa, What's the weather like tomorrow? Tomorrow, it will be sunny with a high of 25 and a low of 19 degrees. Oh, that's lucky. Watch this. Alexa, tell us a joke. Where does the polar bear keep its money? In a snowbank. <laughs> Mark Costa was waiting, and as if nothing had happened since Lyra was born, the boat mother gathered her into her great arms and kissed her before bearing her off to bed. Alexa? Audio book off. OK. Ah, come on, little one. Time for bed. Alexa, living room lights off. OK. Um, yeah, this was just a commercial, but I'm showing uh, what I want to show is speech recognition has really come into uh, uh, our uh, general lives and uh, people are using it everywhere. Everybody has Alex. Everybody's using Alexa, Siri, Google Home, uh, so many devices which are voice controlled devices. So um, that's the state of current uh, art. Um, let's see now what are the technologies which go, be go behind building these uh, devices. So we'll start with a general introduction to machine learning. So what is machine learning? Uh, you have, uh, let's say, Consider a simple space, a two-dimensional space, and these are two different classes. One class is the star class and the, uh, the red stars or the green dots, right? How do you distinguish them computationally? So let's say I get a new point, which is somewhere here. Now, which, which class is this? Is this red star or green dot? You can write on the chat window. This point belongs to red star or green dot? Which class it belongs to? Okay, so we have one response. Any more responses? Okay, either. green okay good so uh, how did you decide uh, so how we decide is we build a separating line right that is one way to classify uh, computationally we'll build a separating line so the equation of line is x2 minus mx1 minus c is equal to zero and then uh, we have divided our space into two regions. One region is x2 minus mx1 minus c greater than zero, and the other is less than zero, right? There are two regions. And uh, now I will have my unknown point. I will put this point, these values of x2 and x1 in my equation of line, and I will get some value for this x2 minus mx1 minus c. This value will not be zero because this point is not on the line. If it is on the line, then it will be zero, but it is not on the line. It is on one of the sides. So depending on that, it will be either positive or negative. Since this is positive, I will conclude that it belongs to the red star category, right? That is the essence or machine learning. That is a, a simple example to understand machine learning. Now I will say, that this black dot or black square belongs to the class red star, right? This is called hard classification. Why is this called hard classification? Because I have assigned a label uh, in a forceful way, I have, in a hard way that yes, this point is red star only. There is no possibility that it can be called a green dot. On the other hand, I could have also soft classification. What does that mean? I will say, as uh, Jayant mentioned, 
that this point could be in either of the classes, right? And that is very true because this point lies so close to the boundary and uh, it is very much possible that my boundary had a mistake. My boundary was not uh, proper or there is some uncertainty in whether it belongs here or here. So I will say uh, with a probability of 60%, this belongs to the red class and with a probability of 40%, it belongs to the green class. So I'm also quantifying the uncertainty. Now, now imagine if I have, if my black square would have been somewhere here, the unknown point somewhere here, then my uh, here, what will be the values? Can you tell what will be P uh, black square is equal to red star? If the, if the point is here, if the black star is here, what is the probability given by this line? Yeah, it will be very high value, close to one, right? And if it were here, it will be very low value, close to almost zero, right? So that is machine learning. Oh, sorry. Yeah, now, okay, now, how are we using machine learning for speech recognition? So first of all, we have to see where is the data. You saw there the data was in a two dimensional space, X1, X2, but here in speech recognition, what is my data? So the data is the recording which I make. Somebody speaks or there are different sounds and somebody records and there is a waveform and then there is this plot uh, or this, uh, how it changes with time, right? Value with respect to time. I can record with a microphone. I digitize it using quantization, uh, sampling, etc., And then I get a waveform, which is a stream of numbers. These are quantized numbers. Uh, I get a stream of them. It's a time series. And then I extract different kinds of features from X. I, uh, to my machine learning model, I cannot feed the uh, raw X. Why? Because, uh, it is very high dimensional. That is for, therefore it is difficult to classify. Uh, so we can make use of some symmetries in my data, uh, some invariances in my data. So as to extract lower dimensional features. So these low dimensional, so when I extract features, my requirement is that my features should be low dimensional. They should be discriminating for the class I am interested in. If I'm interested in classifying the audio into different vowels, then what is important? There are two things, source and filter, source filter model. Source means the peaks, what is the location of the peaks uh, or the F naught value. And the filter means what is the envelope on the peak, I mean, yeah, the envelope. So for discriminating different vowels, what kind of feature is important? Could you please tell? You can write on the chat window. What kind of feature is important? Is it the uh, F naught value or the envelope for discriminating between vowels? Somebody can write on the chat window. Okay, so we got one answer. We got multiple answers. Envelope, yes. Uh, okay, but now if I want to distinguish frequencies, I want to distinguish, I want to estimate what frequency the person is speaking at. If I, am I speaking uh, at a lower frequency like, uh, or am I speaking at a higher frequency like, uh, like, so if I want to distinguish the frequency, then which feature will I use? Envelope or the location of peaks or the F naught? Yeah, F naught values, yes. So good, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, thank you very much. Now I have a question to those of you who have attended the first half. What kind of features have you seen in the first half of the course. What kind of features have you seen in the first half of the course? Could you please write? 
on the chat window what kind of features have you seen in the first half of the course spectrogram yes so basically spectrogram it compresses your high dimensional audio into spectra a, a series of spectra and you just consider the magnitude of them mostly you can use phase also but okay magnitude is uh, popularly used so the magnitude spectrogram is one kind of features but now see in the spectrogram you have got both the f not values as well as the envelope but you know that to distinguish uh, different vowels you only need the envelope so basically your spectrogram has got lot of redundant information it can still be reduced to a smaller dimensional vector which has uh, precisely the information which you need so any other kind of features have you seen uh nobody is responding please respond do not fear we are this is a, a interactive learning <laughs> uh, you will not get this interactive learning if you read the book <laughs> or if you watch a video this is to help me also understand what is the uh, current level of understanding so that i can uh, focus on specific topics substrial coefficients very good so substrial coefficients uh, try to capture the shape of the envelope so substrial coefficients try to capture the shape of the envelope so from spectrogram which could be let's say 1024 dimensional vector uh, magnitude spectrogram you have reduced it to let's say 13 14 substrial coefficients so see such a big reduction almost 100 times reduction so that is the meaning of uh, feature extraction you might have also seen lpc coefficients or uh, mfcc coefficients or oh, mfccs are basically substrial coefficients uh, okay so the these are invariant to orthogonal factors this is also very important like uh, i do not want my asr system to be uh, affected by speaker identity let's say if uh, i speak it gives very good results but if let's say jayant speaks it gives bad results that should not happen so it should be invariant to speaker uh, identity that is why th because speaker identity is an orthogonal factor it is not important for the final output for final output i only want to know what the person has spoken i am not interested in speaker identification i am only interested in speech identification what vowels the person has spoken or what words person has spoken but if you define the goal differently which is not asr if you if you define it as who is speaking speaker identification then you focus on different features different kinds of features they should be orthogonal to the content but they should depend on the speaker identity okay now this is a rough analysis which you have already seen i'm repeating it so that uh, so as to connect uh, the two portions uh, so speech is like this uh, it's varying with time like when i'm speaking different vowels so here i let's say it's a word like hello so here is her a l o so this signal is changing over time so we cannot analyze the entire signal in one go so what we do we break the signal into small small windows and we analyze each window uh, kind of separately so this is a small window we take and we extract acoustic features it could be spectrograms substrial coefficients or some kind of features then we have uh, so okay this these features are extracted with the help of fft mostly as a spectrogram and capsule coefficients both of them they use fft uh, i hope you know fast fourier transforms so i will not discuss that here uh, and then you have uh, filter banks i hope you have read about filter banks as well these filter banks they further compress your spectrogram into smaller bands let's say 
if I had some spectrogram, then I will just, this will say between 7,000 and 8,000 Hertz, what are the, what is the energy, right? We are looking energy into small, small bands, which are triangular in this case. This is a, this is a triangular filter bank, which is, you can see it is logarithmically scaled, like kind of logarithmic scaling that as the frequency is increasing, your uh, width is increasing. And also the uh, inter, uh, inter, inter frequency distance also is increasing. Okay, so you are using filter banks, capsule coefficients, they cause decorrelation that you have less redundancy in your features. Then you can use linear predictive coding, etc. Now, this was all about feature extraction. Then once you have extracted the features, you feed them into some kind of machine learning module. It could be Gaussian mixture models or deep neural networks followed by HMMs, et cetera. So finally, the output which we need is, uh, finally the output which we are looking for is, okay, Alexa, play George Harrison, right? I want to convert my audio into text. So this is the text, Alexa, play George Harrison. Or actually for ASR, this is the output. On George Harrison. I'm sorry. Alexa, stop. Sorry, this was a live demo. Uh, okay, so uh, we have, um, uh, uh, this is the kind of output from an ASR system, but we could also do speaker diarization, let's say multiple people speaking in the meeting and uh, First person participant one says, hi, what is the agenda today? Second person says, we'll discuss about this topic. So can you tell who spoke when? That could be another kind of output of your system. This is not ASR, this is called speaker dialization. And then in this way, I can have uh, a, a, a song recommendation system, or I can have uh, 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 event detection kind of system where I just, I'm listening to the sounds and I'm telling, okay, there is a car approaching or there's a traffic sound, et cetera. And all these uh, models are built on this simple philosophy, this simple principle that I'm trying to estimate probability of output given the input and the model. This is the machine learning approach. Now my input are at the frame level, stream level, segment level. So my labels could be at any level. So let's say uh, when I, for this task, Alexa play George Harrison, then I don't have any, station, Alexa please. stop. Then I don't have any, uh, um, uh, I do not, no, nobody tells me that from this time frame to this time frame is the a uh sound, then l sound, then a uh sound, but rather uh, the label which is given to me is the entire string, the whole string. So the, labeling is at the segment level. That is, how do you handle that? That is the difficult part in ASR. And that's what we'll be discussing. We use HMMs for this purpose. Okay, so different models are used. Uh, linear classification, regression, probabilistic models, SVMs, neural networks. These are all used for mapping your uh, input to output. Okay, so it's almost five minutes left. Okay, let's discuss this example. I will, this, this is a precursor to ASR. I will be discussing uh, a, an audio classification task. This is a simpler task, simpler than ASR for the reason that, uh, for the reason that um, the labels are not, uh, how do I say? Okay, let me put it this way. Okay, this is like simple vowel classification. I will speak only one vowel and you have to classify what vowel is this. When I say, uh, then the machine should output. I said, uh, when I say E, machine should output, it's uh, E. So it's like you are classifying only a single phoneme, only a single phoneme, right? So the audio waveform uh, of 10 seconds, let's say, and I'm just saying, uh, and you are breaking it into small, small windows. And then the event, event, when I say event, it means either uh, or e or u, these five bubbles or 
10 vowels. Uh, R E E U A A P E O O. Uh, so this is uh, this is the task. It's it could be binary classification or multi-label classification, but we focus only on uh, let's say binary classification task. Um, so let's say the task is very simple. Uh, I said a uh, or e. I said one of these two sounds a uh, or e. So I just have my input, which is the stream of or spectrogram, you can say, and then I feed it into a neural network, one spectrum at a time, and then I get some output. It could be, in this case, it would be just binary, whether it is an R sound or E sound, a binary classification. And then I use a sigmoidal nonlinearity in the output layer, and I have some objective function, which I use to train my network. We'll be discussing all these things uh, in a while in later later classes about machine learning. And then my model is trained on one part of the data. So because uh, my training data should be different from my test data. So my whole data set, data set means here, I have the sound R and the corresponding label, the R label, the sound E corresponding label, another sound R, the corresponding label, another sound R like that. So I have got multiple R examples and multiple E examples, and they're all labeled. So that is called my data. And I have two parts. I've split the data into two parts. One is the training data, other is the test data, so that I'm, I'm not testing on the same data which I have already used for training, right? I want to test on some unseen data so that uh, I want to check whether my model is able to generalize to new data or not because when finally it will be put to production, people will be using it, they will be using it on new data, not on your training data. So that's why to check its generalization, generalizability, we are testing it on another data. And then we have, uh, so depending on whichever probability was large, whether it was R or E, I will say it was that sound. And the evaluation can be done using false acceptance rate or miss rate. Okay, this was the task of, uh, audio uh, classification. Now, if you have any questions, you can ask now. We will continue from, so now the next will, we will be discussing about speech recognition. So I'm just giving an overview in the, in the beginning so that you can appreciate what you are studying. And then after covering this overview, I'll go into details of each part. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. We can stop here uh, today's session uh, so we'll meet on uh, wednesday morning next uh, but you, if you have any questions feel free to ask now